Anxiety doesn't always present itself in the conventional way that we speak about it, especially not in children. So today I'm looking at eight ways anxiety shows up, particularly in children, as something else. First off, as always, if you're new here, I'd love you to stick around. I'd love you to turn on the notifications so you know each and every time that I post a video, I talk about mental health, feelings, emotions, anxiety, and how I still try to thrive in my life in spite of some of those things. So as I say, if that's something that might be a benefit to you, then please do make sure you have subscribed. Lots of people are saying they think that their children might be suffering from anxiety, but they're not sure. So today I'm looking at ways anxiety presents itself in children. So the first one is anger. Now for me, this is the way I tackled my anxiety for most of my life and still can be true today. Um, lots of my anger when I was younger was a fear of shame. It was a reaction to shame, um, but that shame made me feel very anxious. And so the moment I started to feel that anxiety coming in, I would react with anger. So my angry outbursts were nearly always a way of coping and managing with my anxiety. Difficulty sleeping, so this can mean, for me, for a lot a lot of it was, because I was so exhausted from the anxiety all the time, um, I would sleep a lot, and sleeping became a little bit of a coping mechanism for me, and it still can be today. It's like my mind and body just shuts down, and I want to go to sleep. Also, you have the other end of the spectrum, probably this one's more, more obvious and more frequent, and we see it in more children, and that is difficulty getting to sleep at night. Uh, we, you know, when we go to bed, when the head goes on the pillow, the brain fires up, and that's when anxiety can really come on us up quite strong. And so lots of children find difficulty sleeping, and they want to keep busy, and they, you know, they seem to fire up when you put them to bed. That's because we put them in that space. We take away anything they might be using to cope and manage with their anxiety, and so their anxiety, or it becomes much easier for them to notice their anxiety, anxiety and so it feels much stronger. Defiance. Now, for a lot of children that are struggling with anxiety, it can give that feeling of being out of control. And I know for me, when I struggle with feeling anxious, I start to try and control things and quite often I will try to control them in, in a much more unhealthy way. And so with children, it can come across as this real strong defiance. Yeah, The moment we start telling them what to do or we start putting plans in place, if it kind of if it kind of disrupts and breaks up the pattern that they formed in their head to deal with their anxiety, the control and structure they put in place, however unhealthy that might be, they can become um, very defiant and seem to go against what we want them to do for no reason when actually it's because we're breaking their code of contact that they their code of conduct that they're using as a control mechanism um, and so they can seem very defiant outlandish and angry outbursts now this is slightly different to anger when I spoke about anger in the first point it was more to do with um, that kind of feeling angry all the time because they're annoyed at the anxiety. Um, this one is more to do with calm people that seem to have angry outbursts. This is a lot to do with pushing down feelings, pushing down emotions, pushing down that feel of, feeling of anxiety, and eventually the bill gets paid, yet yeah, it comes out of them sideways. And it's calm, gentle people who seem to have these angry outbursts that seem to be out of character. That can often be a sign of suppressing anxiety and it coming out of them in an explosion. Lack of focus. Now, I guess in some ways this one seems quite um, obvious, right? Um, but it is one that is worth mentioning that any children that child that struggles to focus or finds it difficult honing in and, and focusing on one particular thing, that can be a sign of anxiety. Of course, it can be a sign of many other things as well, but in particular, anxiety. Avoidance. Now, lots of children, particularly I was one of these, would start to associate their anxiety with different places, yeah? And I know for me, I started to avoid and withdraw from different places because I didn't know it and I couldn't attach the idea that it was because it made me feel anxious to it because I kind of ran away from that. But um, I recognize today that the different places in my life that I've tried to avoid or switch off from because I know they make me feel anxious. And so when a child seems to withdraw and avoid certain situations regularly, again, this can be a signal of anxiety. Over planning. Now this ties in a little bit to uh, a point we made earlier and it, it, and it has a lot to do with control again, right? And I know that young people can, um, they will be over the top needing to know about the plans of the day. And I, I know one of my children, for example, 
if the plans change for the day, and I mean even just timings, like if it's going to be an hour and a half instead of an hour, and I said it was going to be an hour, um, that can mess with their control and their need for the structure, um, and they've over planned the day in their head, and it changing can make them their anxiety heightened, right? So this over planning, and if you get them to plan something or ask them what they would like to do, you'll see this over planning, and that is a coping mechanism and a way of dealing with their feeling of anxiety. Negative thinking. Now, I remember as a child, I would always have these real over-the-top concerns. I remember uh, as a very young child always being worried that somebody was going to die. Uh, I remember being in a car, I was always petrified that it was going to crash. And that was because uh, the way that I articulated and worked out the feelings of anxiety that I had, um, sometimes the only words and vocabulary and kind of thought process that I could connect them to was like these big catastrophes happening, right? And so if somebody, if children are often vocalizing fears and worries of something really over the top negative happening, this as well can be a signal that they're feeling very, very anxious. And the only way they have to vocalize it and articulate it is to talk about some kind of catastrophe happening because that's the best way to reflect how they're feeling, which could be an anxious yeah and full of anxiety so there you have it there's eight ways that anxiety shows up in children um that you might not have known about and um, they're not always glaringly obvious reasons because they're often we what we see is the reaction to anxiety rather than just anxiety and people think that anxious people just walk around being anxious and feeling nervous all the time and although that could be one of the signals quite often we build up layers to to hide that particularly as children i have made another video in the past about um, helping children with anxiety so that's worth checking out it's going to be linked over here or here somewhere um, and until then i'll see you next week for next time's video